Hi, my name is Marin, and today FM rocks in Lambasa. Bola, my name is Mark. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks in Makassi. Hey, Bola from Rocky Rocky. I'm Mentor. I love listening to Today FM because they're playing my hits. Today FM rocks. My name is Enrico. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks in Suba. Hi, I'm Asunika, and I'm from Lotoka, and I love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bola, I'm Siva. I'm from Bat. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. In this bulletin, two lives claimed in house fire. Employees' productivity dropped due to domestic violence. And Singatoka deficit a concern. From the studios of FBC Suba, Deva Lendua. Two people lost their lives in a fire at Tamasua Street off Nailuva Road in Suva last night. The elderly couple were aged 79 and 74 years. The National Fire Authority confirms the fire started after 10 p.m. The double-story flat was occupied by an elderly couple with their tenants. The tenants who lived in the bottom flat managed to flee to safety. However, the elderly couple perished in the fire. One of the tenants, Margaret Konata says they were inside the house when they heard a group of boys shouting and dogs barking. Konata says this group of boys alerted them about the fire. We were like just peeping out and the uh, boy, come out, there's a fire. So I told her, please bring the key. So when we ran out, we could see the flame coming in that side. The case of a 22-year-old man's body, which was found in Tokowanga, Lotoka, on Sunday, has been classified as murder. Police have confirmed that the deceased, Hasnil Sharma, had sustained injuries to his head, which resulted in his death. Sharma's body was found at the old service station in Tokowanga, which was later identified by his family members. Police say there are no suspects at the moment as investigation continues. A, national inter a new international finance study reveals that domestic and sexual violence causes working Fijians to lose almost 10 days of work per year. The loss of 10 working days identified in the report were accumulated from employees feeling distracted, tired or unwell, being late for work, being absent or helping others respond to domestic and sexual violence. Emotional abuse, harassment and intimidation were identified as the most common form of violence encountered by both men and women. Fiji is among the uh, most gender unequal countries in the world today. And uh, uh, according to the World Economic Forum's 2018 Gender Gap Index, uh, for example, Fiji ranks 106 out of A 31-year-old man who allegedly bit off his defective partner's ear has been further remanded by the Suva High Court. Yawal Ambaravilala is facing four counts of act with intent to cause grievous body, bodily harm and one count of resisting arrest. The state has been granted 21 days to file information and disclosures. The alleged incident is believed to have taken place along Sukanaivalu Road in Nambua, Suva on January 5th. It is believed the incident happened after an argument broke out between the couple while they were intoxicated. The prosecution objected to bail as Marivilala has a few pending cases before the court. The case will be recalled on February 13th. In 2017, the Singapore Town Council posted total liabilities of a little more than $2.6 million. This was compared to their net assets, which was worth only $132,307. According to their financial statement of income in the same year, the council incurred a deficit of $95,973 with total expenditure of more than $1.4 million. Chair for the Public Accounts Committee, Alvik Maharaj, who's currently reviewing the council's consolidated reports from 2015 to 2017, says the council assures them new initiatives are being developed to put Singatoka in a better financial position. So one 
of the major concerns raised by PEC was actually what are their strategies uh, they are looking at in terms of actually moving from deficit to a surplus budget and uh, PNL. So one thing they actually did mention was they are actually looking at reducing their operational costs as well as increasing their revenue. So the council itself is working very closely with the essays, new appointed essays. A lot will need to be considered before final, finalizing plans for a new Suva fish market. Special Administrators Board Chair Isikeli Tikundundua says they are looking at avenues that will last. Tikundundua says they know of the need to have a new fish market in Suva and discussions are ongoing. The Suva City Council had announced in 2011 the relocation of the Nambukalo fish market to the present Suva market. At the moment, we're looking at, uh, you know, we have a greater super master plan. And uh, these are things that we need to incorporate there and then come up with uh, what we consider to be a long-term solution uh, so far as the fish market is concerned. The New Zealand High Commissioner to Fiji, Jonathan Kerr, has applauded the Fijian government on how they've responded to the recent natural disasters. Speaking at the assessment to the assessment teams that departed for Lao last night, Kerr says they are full of admiration of the Fijian government's work to try and reach out to those affected by tropical cyclone Tino and Sarai. Kerr says the Fijian government has done a tremendous job in having a quick turnaround time to assist those affected. And you adopted a kind of best practice approach and a practice that we would use in New Zealand to think carefully through what's needed to respond to an event like this and then to go off and do it. The, the assessment teams will also distribute food rations to those affected and at the same time conduct damage assessment reports. The Fiji Roads Authority is still conducting damage assessments to roads and bridges that were affected by tropical cyclone Tino. Acting Chief Executive Kamal Prasad says teams have left for Rotuma and Rambi where urgent repair works need to be conducted on jetties and crossings. Prasad adds they hope to have the cost of damage in two weeks' time following the completion of repair works to the damaged infrastructure. Fiji records a new high in visitor arrivals in 2019, the year seeing 894,389 tourists come our way. This was an increase of 2.8 percent from 2018, which was the previous record of 870,309. Australia topped the list of visitor arrivals with 367,020 Australians gracing our shores, followed by New Zealand on 205,998. Japan continued with its increase with an influx of Japanese tourists, including heading to Fiji rather, ending 2019 with a 24.9% increment. Holiday purposes totaled 656,249, while 92,026 came to visit friends or relatives. 29,882 came for business purposes, while 116,232 visited Fiji for other reasons. The July visitor arrival number of 96,376 was the highest in 2019, followed by the months of August and June, with arrival figures of 88,834 and 85,652 respectively. The World Health Organization is set to decide whether to declare an international public health emergency over the new coronavirus in China. The death toll now stands at six, with the first case of the respiratory illness confirmed. Coming up, consistency, the key for Fijiana and Hamilton, and new coach for Jet Setters. Stay with us. Hoy tabua, ang do talita na na barong ay na bula FM, naman doon na sir. Bula, ang ang gonoa, iluto ka do talita ka na bula FM, bertini naman doon na sir. Ni bula bina ka, nandreking ko sa bula FM nga, e na kasi. Nandreking ko sa mundo at siyo na bula FM, naman doon na sir nusur. Ni bula bina ka, nandreking ko Jerry, yung melampasa, ang do barong nga ay na bula FM, naman doon. Bula FM, naman doon na sir.
Getting the little things right is paramount for the Fijiana at the Hamilton Sevens this weekend. Head coach Sayasi Fuli says the players have worked tirelessly for the last two weeks to maintain their consistent performance in the World Series. Trying to build uh, the combinations, try to, to work hard on our weapons, uh, what we, uh, we were left with uh, when we played in, uh, in, in Dubai and Cape Town, especially the restarts and, and, and uh, the transition game and, and try to maintain the continuity and keep the possession for as many phases as we can and try to defend hard uh, on the multi-phase. Two Fijians are looking forward to the new Super Rugby season. New Blues winger Emoni Narawa featured for the season in their pre-season match last week, while Tevita Nambura is expected to be a regular for the Highlanders this year. No, no I did not, but um, yeah, good to have a good old run around with the, with the boys. Um, but yeah, it was good fun. Uh, um, I actually don't mind as long as I get to play, get in the field. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, no, no better. Yeah, the boys are working pretty hard. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've been feeling it the last four weeks. Yeah. And yeah, the boys get back into it. Yeah, the boys, are, um, they were looking forward uh, after the last, last week, but yeah. it's still pre-season, so we're learning. We just learn and move, so it's going to be a tough one. So, yeah. After a busy few months and some impressive job offers, ex-All Black Tony Brown is back to work preparing for the Highlanders for their Super Rugby season. Brown saying while it was an honour to be asked to join the All Blacks, choosing Japan and the Highlanders instead was an easy decision. Former Suva coach Kamal Swami is now the new coach for the Nandi football side and former president Javed Ahmed has stepped down from his position. During the Nandi FA Board of Control meeting last night, Ahmed stepped down citing personal commitments and senior vice president Ashwan Singh will act in the position until the annual general meeting on February 26th. The BOC has also named Kamal Swami as the new coach of the Jet Setters while Nandi lawyer and Nandi FA Vice President Man Sami Chetty is the new team director. Nandi is also in the process of acquiring the services in the likes of Chonetani Baksh, Chosefata Nembuli and Napoleoni Gasewakatini. Nandi players Nabua in the Nandi plays, pardon me, Nabua in the first round of the Vodafone Premier League next Sunday. Six traditional games is expected to be tried in schools by the end of March. Senior teachers will pilot the program and are undergoing training on how these past games are played. Physical Education Curriculum Coordinator Biu Dolati says the workshops will be on the revival of these games. This workshop will be targeting out. So when teachers go out, they will have know how is to how they can take those little information and use the the information past the models that they get to recreate the games that they use, their grandfathers used to play. Expect cloudy periods with brief showers over the eastern and interior parts of the larger islands. Elsewhere, mainly fine. And that is your FBC News Now. Remember to join us at 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. For these stories and others, you can also tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Enjoy your lunch and good afternoon. My name is Neha and I'm from Kadavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. We're Nasori se Mirchi FM is Julum. Hi, I'm Shara Pagash Bhatkata. Tava me Mirchi FM Stepkinson and Mirchi FM it's hot. Hi, my name is Prashant. I live in Suva. I love Mirchi FM because Mirchi FM it's hot. Hi, I'm Shane. I love uh, listening Mirchi FM because it's awesome and it's hot. Hi, I'm Rachel. And I'm Shavi. We, we love, love listening to Mirchi FM in Lambasa. Mirchi FM it's hot. <laughs>